we can maximize the gift and the opportunity in the situation as well as specifically dealing with some of the challenge the practical challenges of being in a global tech pandemic and going through that so it's it's been really quite really kind of cool experience being part of or you know facilitating and leading positive change in the world uh, and we're only just beginning you know this is this is an exciting place to be um in terms of being able to support people globally to evolve our consciousness and create positive change in the world so um this this is a good topic that i really wanted to come and talk about because uh it's been 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 it's been the center of my world since <laughs> since march so um non-stop you know working 10 to 14 hour days on supporting people through this so yeah. okay that's awesome and uh, you talk about the non-stop word uh, that m reminded me about the podcast that you have been running uh, please remind us about maybe the new brand or the new direction of that it was unstoppable postcard right so it's like nothing can actually stop us to excel or to really develop ourselves better and realize our dreams or our ambition uh, so thank you so much for uh, seeing the first day we met and i actually had a very cute and uh, friendly picture with you before i left the uk and yes you did I, yes <laughs> did you see that it was like i was in the red coat and you are wearing something making me feel like uh, remember about the winter there and then you and me like was like i look very happy okay finally jen leave the uh, uk yeah. <laughs> so, okay. yes so it was very inspiring your podcast at that time and also we had a chance to share our stage so uh, can you share with us the biggest change of the business or the community of the last months yeah so unstoppable well i'll give you a bit of the backstory so the unstoppable brand really came out of my own challenges in overcoming my own self-limitations my own difficulties um, and the podcast was born in 2015 to share the specific challenges, the, the inner, inner game challenges that I'd been through, you know, self-doubt, fears, lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem. Um, you know, I didn't really have this belief inside of me. I grew up in an environment which was very loving and very supportive, but I didn't really have any inspiring role models around me that showed me that things could be done differently. So uh, as I as I got older and and took on a corporate career and then later started my own business, I really, really started to expand the boundaries of what was possible for me. At least I started to see a world of possibility. So I started the Unstoppable podcast really to share some of the, the challenges that I've been through in overcoming some of those inner challenges, including doubt, fears, etc., cetera, and, and, and lack of confidence, but also finding a lack of clarity, you know, lack of clarity. What do I really want? Who am I? Yeah, ans yeah answering answer. these big questions that, that uh, you know, can take a lifetime to navigate. But I really wanted to shortcut the process and understand, you know, deeply understand myself, deeply understand my potential and deeply understand what difference I can make in the world and then, and then go all in on making a, a difference. So that's how the unstoppable brand was formed and you know given talks all over the world and created communities and courses and events around the unstoppable brand really about overcoming your own personal limitations and constraints however i decided to make a change uh, around about 12 months ago uh, in the branding i still use the unstoppable brand but the unstoppable brand was really born of you know keep going no matter what overcome your limitations it was very force orientated it was it was very um you know, it was very, very, um, I'll make it happen no matter what, you know, as long as my brain still works and my heart still beats, I'll make it happen. And it was very much driven from that deep masculine energy. <laughs> um, so when I started to enter in more of a spiritual journey over the last few years and started, in fact, to study a lot of the principles from the East and uh, uh, really tapped into flow and the feminine energy of creativity, I found a greater balance between the kind of make it happen no matter what and quiet, reflective, nurturing creativity. So at that point, I started to ask big questions around what does it mean to be unstoppable and what does it mean to overcome your limits? And I started to look at the other side of it to see what that means. And actually, when we when we actually are able to transcend our own self limitations, we start to elevate ourselves, we start to become a greater leader. So I, I created the elevate brand, uh, really as a reflection of a, a more balanced 
understanding of myself, but also a better understanding of human beings. Having studied, you begun to study philosophy, psychology, spirituality, neuroscience, Science. as well as all of the personal Personal development development topics topics. to really create a more rounded um, concept of what it means to self actualize and what it means to, to make a difference into the world and become the fullest versions of ourselves. So that's how the Elevate brand was born. Wow. That's a real a real shift from the unstoppable way. Now, the principles of becoming unstoppable are still true, but actually it's now balanced and tempered yeah. with a more spiritual uh, centered uh, approach. Beautiful. I really want to jump in to ask about that transformation. Uh, so it, it just also makes me remember the word my friends often gave me nonstop. And uh, it was quite true. And it, it is still in a way that is like, you know, do it no matter what happened, right? And make it uh, happen no matter what. Uh, so we go like, do it, do whatever it takes to make it happen. This is very interesting, and I think it works for a certain period of time. And uh, if we want to go to the long run, or let's say sustainable performance, sustainable happiness or fulfillment, uh, we also want to combine the West and the East, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, maybe we see the very fast growth, like speed in the East now, and then we started seeing the, the movement, then uh, the, the West use the uh, um, let's say philosophy or the ways of the East. So I really like that kind of uh, alignment of the world in a way. And uh, I really want to ask, like, how did you start that journey of saying, okay, I will make a decision to really overcome my limit. And that was the first period of time, let's say the unforgettable, unstoppable postcard. And then yes. when did you start like stop and say, okay, let me see what should I do differently. And then you create the new way of delivering or the new way of living and breathing every day. Well, uh, it's, it's really interesting because no matter how much I started to transcend my own limitations and create real results and you know, everything I was pursuing was starting to become a reality. Uh, but <laughs> there was this internal feeling, this real physical feeling that something wasn't still quite right. And for a long time, things felt quite heavy, even though I was effectively pursuing everything that I'd always dreamt of doing. And it was really the ability to tune into my inner soul and really ch- tune into the, the highest version of myself that really showed me that there was something more. And in fact, my entire personal development journey, which had been going for really about 15 years, you could argue, you know, the whole lifetime is a a personal development journey, but consciously developing myself uh, for 15 years, approximately. I really then started to study into the world of spirituality and consciousness and uh, some of the deeper inner work uh, around who we are as human beings and our soul and uh, and really my performance and everything that I'd sought to to deliver was accelerating at a rate that I couldn't even believe the level of transformation that occurred probably in a two to three year period having opened up my mindset to a whole different paradigm is unbelievable and actually what's quite fascinating when I was 25 years old I'm 36 now uh, when I was 25 I read the Tao Te Ching I read the power of now and some of these really seminal books seminal uh, works but they just didn't land for me. They didn't connect. Uh, but again, just two to three years ago, I read them again. And all of a sudden I saw the world differently and I saw myself differently. And I really wanted to connect with more of a balanced view of the self. And, mm-hmm. uh, and that, that really accelerated in it. And from even embracing things like mindfulness and meditation and truly understanding the power of those tools uh, to, to, to deep, deepen our self-awareness and to deepen our ability to connect more deeply with ourselves and others. Uh, it, it really took a long time to em- fully embrace the power of those types of uh, tools and, and things like Qigong and yoga, you know, these movements that this day, you know, as part of my daily practice now having this movement practice and breath work as part of my daily practice, really to, to, to pursue this deeper understanding of the self and the world uh, it's very difficult to talk about because for a long time I, I, I refuted these things. I pushed them away uh, and actually having embraced them, it's unbelievable how how fast things change. 
So that was the shift in terms of my own personal growth and the own transformation that led to the Elevate brand. You know, the mission, the, the mission statement of the Elevate brand is really to, to elevate humanity and enrich the world, you know, by creating companies and experiences that enable people to do that. So when we entered into this global pandemic, uh, it was really, it really, it really came to me that I wanted to use these principles to support people during this time. Uh, and that's, it's, that's, that's, that's been the real transition. You know, we'd, we'd planned, we'd planned a four day event in London, um, a really experiential event to, to showcase some of these concepts, everything from personal development to spirituality, to yoga, to meditation, to entertainment, to create a really compelling four day experience. But of course we landed into this pandemic and it's not, it's not possible to do that. So um, I started to ask myself questions about how I can support the world and, uh, through these concepts and how I can take this four day festival and, and put it on in a virtual world. So I literally landed back into England from Thailand, where I was spending my honeymoon with my wife, having just got married in November. And we landed back in England on the 13th of March. Uh, we were not in a lockdown at that period of time, but we could see it coming. And by the time the lockdown was announced on the 21st of March, I knew that I had to do something and I had to, I, I had to find my way to contribute to people uh, and, and share what I'd learned over the last uh, 18 years of self-development uh, and more recently more into to spiritual growth to support people through this challenging time because you know i'm not a doctor i'm not someone who's going to go and help on the front lines in the way that it's described but I, ha I had to find a way to support people so i wanted to use the elevate brand and the, the the concept of creating an online festival to really bring people together and share inspirational content that can actually help people to not only navigate the present challenge but actually to really focus on becoming the best versions of ourselves and then asking bigger questions about how can we how can we actually elevate our own consciousness so that together once we create individual change that together we can actually change the world and enrich the world and and ask big questions around what does what does what does a what does an enriched world look like or what does an elevated world look like beyond this and how can we collectively shape uh, the future of humanity Mm -hmm. Thank you. There are a lot of notes on here <laughs> on my side and I really like to dig very in depth in some of the aspects because I think it can be like a awakening conversation. Uh, <laughs> Indeed, yes it is self-awakening for sure. Uh, yeah, I would like to really maybe invite you another day because I didn't really, you know, imagine that kind of direction in the conversation today because I, <laughs> I have really you know i have not really studied your journey how did it change i, I just uh, generally knew that you keep inspiring people and knowing your transformation journey and i think it will reflect on the business that you do uh, so uh, from the entrepreneurship point of view what do you think how does it apply the way of doing it no matter what uh, or no matter what you do, do whatever it takes to make it happen and the other one uh, so do you think like when should we apply the this way it's kind of like go for go for it and the other way it's kind of like a uh, flow yes well the, the reality is as far as i've discovered so far is that we live in this in a world of duality where you know, one doesn't exist without the other, because even in pure stillness, if you look at something in complete stillness and you magnify it under a microscope and you get to the uh, quantum level, everything is still moving and incredibly fast in, in complete stillness. There is never true stillness. We, even in stillness, there is motion. So uh, it, it is a fascinating paradox of, of life. And I think to me, awakening is about understanding that the one does not exist without the other. There is not night without the day. There is not light without the dark. Uh, and it's that it's that beautiful paradox that creates the, the richness of the world that we live in. So it is not to say uh, we eliminate the go to make it happen no matter what, but it actually we, we, we also embrace the concepts of flow. And I, I have some challenges with the way that flow is talked about in the, in, in the mainstream world because it kind of is spoken about that it's one or the other. And I don't believe that to be true because for flow to exist, there first must have had a force upon it that, that has created the flow. Uh, we know that from physics and we know that from observing nature that um, both coexist. Uh, but it's about understanding, uh, I guess. It's understanding when to apply and how to 
when to apply uh, force and when to apply, when when to when to when to surrender to flow and how we can use both of these to to create peak performance and how we can embrace conscious business to actually do things that make a difference in the world for the better better of the planet as well as for the better of our communities and ourselves it's a big question you know it's a, it's a fascinating one and even if we think about it on a, a dualistic level you know someone said to me it's very good to look at both sides of the coin and i said what do you mean both side of the coin the coin doesn't just have two sides if you turn it sideways it has a an infinite ring all the way around it which is the third side which most people forget about and that third side is infinite of infinite possibility so when we start to think it's this or that we've lost the point it's not just this or that it's it's all you know it's infinite and it's embracing infinite possibility it's in but it's also embracing when it comes to entrepreneurship you know the, the principles of having a clear vision and a purpose and a mission are incredibly important because that shapes and guides our direction direction but at the same time, being able to, to, to step into stillness, to connect with uh, our, our deepest levels of self, uh, and then applying that to the way we do business is, is where the transformation and, and the awakening side really does happen. And it's very difficult. You know, there's been some incredible moments of transformation that I can't even explain through ex for exploring the more centered conscious level of, uh, you know, awakening of the conscious self. Um, but but my mission is really to find a way to connect people to that because you know personal development will take you so far but when you when you when you can when you can start to elevate your own consciousness uh, and connect with something deeper and and broader then things could really start to change and fast and not only that the heaviness the heaviness that comes with uh pursuing things uh with a kind of do it no matter what the heaviness kind of subsides and we can enter into that um the softness and the nurturing stillness that comes with um, being fully present in the moment and, uh, you know, creating something from a higher source, whether you call that God, the universe, higher spirit, higher self, whatever, when you can tap into the universal power that connects us all. And Jen, I could share some moments that I couldn't even describe using human language. <laughs> but, you know, there was there was a moment when in deep meditation where I, I, I truly felt connected just to the energetic source inside me, you know, just the energy itself, you know, beyond, beyond the organs, beyond the senses, beyond the rational mind, just into pure consciousness. And when I woke, woke, I woke out of that meditation and saw, I see everything now I can just see, you know, even this microphone and, but everything in nature is just vibration, you know, it's vibrational energy. And when we understand that we are simply vibrational spiritual beings living in a human world, <laughs> gosh we can we can really tap into some power that's uh that's 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 always been there for us but it's understanding how to tune into it and and, and utilize it as part of our transformation and our, our our daily way of living is is really where the the, the magic can happen uh, the saying that you just mentioned we are not our body but uh, mm. we are like the soul and the, the body is just a form of that and that's why we still remember whoever not now in the world anymore uh, so uh, you have shared very very spiritual and at the same time practical way and i would like you to to make it like more become a practical habits approach right uh, so we have maybe people now they uh, finish universities or they study in universities or they they graduate and then they start working or maybe they have a passion that they want to start business and uh, if you look at that journey uh, what what do you think the flow or the way of doing it, no matter what the, how, how does really apply if you, you need to put it in that like journey or circle cycle of a human being yeah well i feel the i feel like the planet and the human the, the the people of the world are going through transition right now i feel that there's a global transition but the more people i speak to the more I feel like there's an individual transition. You know, so you mentioned people coming out of university. There's a lot of people right now questioning, are they on the right path? Are they on the right career path? How do they want to transition into better health? How do they want to transition into uh, f financial prosperity? How do they want to transition into a career or, or a business that's truly fulfilling and impactful? I think the world is going through this transition. 
and and for, for the people watching whether you feel like you're in a place of transition this is a beautiful time because i believe it's really about understanding the inner world and the outer world in order to to make some powerful decisions about what what is most important to you from the inner the inner work that i've done the biggest self-realization i've i've accustomed uh, uh, i've learned from from doing the inner work is really understanding myself truly what is what are my values what's most important to me what when i think about values i think about emotions i think about core desired feelings because at the end of every value if you say what's important to you it could be you know family success accomplishment health well-being what what do you get at the end of that it's a feeling a feeling a feeling of accomplishment a feeling of fulfillment a feeling of peace a feeling of joy a feeling of love a feeling of satisfaction what are the greatest feelings that you're seeking to 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 attain on a daily basis but then when you understand and this is quite deep but when you understand the feelings that you're pursuing you can then look at what are the activities what are the things what are the what are the what are the what are the passions that enable you to connect more deeply with those core values so if happiness or adventure or peace or joy are your values then what activities are going to bring you those uh feelings on a moment to moment basis not only that really understanding what are your natural gifts what are your talents what are your skills what are you knowledgeable in what could you be uh, what could you develop a level of expertise in this is still for me part of the inner work is understanding what are your natural gifts because for me you know there are certain characteristics and there's certain skills that have been with me for a lifetime but it took a life it's taken almost half a lifetime to kind of evaluate what those natural gifts are and be able to really embrace them and utilize them on a daily basis in my business and my life uh you know things like curiosity um my ability to ask deeper questions my ability to spot and solve problems uh, uh, talents i've had since i was very very young but I've, it's only been since I've gone through this deep inner work that I recognize the power of these abilities and how when I can implement them as, a, as my special uh, abilities, then I can really start to create transformational results with, within myself and within my business and for others. So understanding our values, understanding our talent, understanding our areas of expertise and knowledge. And then finally, when it comes to things like passion, what are you most interested in? Yeah, and when I when I look at passions and interests, again, I strip it back to the activity itself. Because if someone says to me, "I'm passionate about music," then I ask the question, "What does that mean? Are you passionate about listening to music? Are you passionate about creating music? Are you passionate about marketing music? Are you passionate about producing or editing music? When it comes to music, what is the activity that lights you up? Because once you understand at that level of uh, of what your true passion is or your true interests are, and you combine that with your values and your talents and expertise that's where i find the 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 joy of life you know the 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 meaning the purpose that's the inner game but then when i look at the outside the external world and then you start to think what is the change that you would like to see in the world what is the greatest problem in the world that you would like to be aligned with solving in your either in your market or your industry or globally and you connect that inner inner understanding with an outer understanding of the world of the change you'd like to make and the way you'd like to impact in the world and you combine that inner and outer again that comes down to when you you you, you really can start to create momentum because you have a deep self-understanding but you also have a deep external understanding of the world that you're trying to influence thank you and i feel so bummed in a way because i like wow i love this topic by the way i really do and we I somehow like when we talk about businesses or entrepreneurship right people will think it in a very maybe a practical business operation level or strategy or brand building at the same time we look back uh, what is the person or what is the drive of the business is the person who doing exactly it all, exactly right? that so if we only like do the surface which is that kind of business surface, then uh, we don't tap into the really great potential, as you said, you may call it unlimited power or uh, the un the fin uh, infinity the energy. Infinite, yes, yes, absolutely. It's all connected. You know, you, you can't have one without the other in business. We need to have the practical, logical, you know, it's, it's mind, body, spirit. We need to have the logical understanding of the marketplace and the strategies. You know, we need to know who our customer is. We need to know what problems are solving. That's an intellectual, logical process. 
but then bringing in the emotion and the physical and the metaphysical and the spiritual aspect as the leader of the business, as the entrepreneur. If you look at any successful business, it's the leader themselves that creates the, the success or is the catalyst for the success. So it's, it's about understanding, yes, the logical market st strategies that we want to pursue, uh, but it's actually also about really becoming the greatest version of ourselves as a leader, as an entrepreneur, uh, so that we can channel that power into our activity and into the business that we're creating and therefore into the world through our products and services and, and the things that we're trying to create. Yeah, and actually this one is uh, more difficult, right? And you know, <laughs> yes. like, <laughs> we often say, like, the person who hinders the business or to elevate the business is the that CEO, and then he said, what, what is that? Uh, so I, I don't normally share to our community that there was a publisher and my friend as a consultant went to the publisher and said, you know, if you want to develop your publishing company, you, you want to leave or you change. <laughs> and then yes. uh, the CEO didn't really enjoy that, uh, you know, advice, but actually he left after mm -hmm. around one year and the business just like tripled, uh, which is, uh, which means that it doesn't mean that he not great, but it's maybe he has another kind of gifts as you call or the talents that can be used in another area that make the better results. So uh, I really like what you said about look at, at things in a very deeper level and the fundamental level. And you gave us a very nice way of looking at what, what are the core values that all the things that matter to us and asking ourselves the question and also realizing what we do the best as a person so maybe in the world of do it whatever it takes we go like be the best at what you do right <laughs> so yeah the expertise i think uh, the the passion and the interest so thank you for really deeper in the way you look at things in that deeper level and my question would be how often should you ask yourself to have that clarity? And uh, maybe you can share from your way, right? How, what is the habit of keep asking every day, every week, or what will be that habit of reflection? It's a daily habit. It's a daily habit. You know, to me, it's, it's you can, you know, there are certain practices I put in place where I spend a deep dive, a, a, a prolonged period of time in reflection. So every 90 days, I'll spend two to three days really extracting myself from business and having a real deep dive into, you know, the vision, the mission, the priorities, and then, you know, using a process of design thinking or ideation to take a, a holistic reflection process for the business. On a personal level, it's a daily habit, a daily habit of, of of several things really uh, i have a meditation practice i have a movement practice and i have a reflection practice that i go through every day um, we are very very um it's very our minds are very active and they are very busy and they think a lot of thoughts on a daily basis and often we can connect with the things that aren't necessarily the most useful thoughts to think about what i've done what i've realized in studying the highest and most successful individuals on earth they've tuned their brain to con consistently focus upon the things and thoughts that are going to successfully uh, transform their own personal reality so if we're not spending time every day tuning into what our default thought patterns are and unwinding and unpacking what we're thinking about what's dominant on our minds then we're just leaving the world to chance we're, le we're letting the world externally influence us rather than us influencing the world around us so to me it's a daily a daily practice of self-reflection and, and, and still retuning into the mission because it's very easy once you discover your mission to say, cool, I've got it. So it becomes a mission statement on the wall. Great. But actually, unless you're connecting with it every day and asking yourself what quantum leaps you can make towards that vision, what's in the way, both internally and externally for you achieving that, how can you support your growth? How can you transcend your current limitations? What's currently on your mind? What are you thinking about most of the time? What is occupying 90% plus of your thoughts right now? If you're not reflecting on those every every th those things every single day, you are leaving the world to chance. And believe me, every day that I, I, if I skip the practice, whether it's the mindset, the journaling, the movement, or the workouts, my product productivity will will materially decline. You know, it it will. My sleep quality will be lower. My productivity will be lower. My effectiveness will be lower. And my thought process, my thoughts will will free. And sometimes, believe me. 
sometimes it's good to take yourself out of those practices and just allow your brain to go completely wild because that's how creativity uh, emerges. But sometimes it's really important uh, to stay rigidly focused on the goal at hand. And the, the only way we do that is by tuning our mind to that every single day and reflect uh, through through reflection, quiet reflection. Uh, I use a process called Morning Pages, which I uh, used from the, uh, a very famous book by Julia Cameron called The Artist's Way. It's a stream of consciousness journal process, but I combine that with a series of directed questions. You know, I ask myself five, five daily questions once I've done my stream of consciousness, but the stream of consciousness will enable, enable me to tap into what on earth is going on in my mind. Uh, and, and you know, what am I feeling importantly? Because if you wake up and you feel frustrated or tired or angry, or confused you need to get rid of you need to dive into that the first thing in the morning because otherwise it will it will determine the, your day so for me it's really tuning into what are the default what are the default thought and emotional patterns and then reshaping them redirecting them and it's amazing the power of the mind i've, I've been recently studying a lot around utilizing these practices to in, impact and positively influence sleep and it's amazing and try if anyone's struggling with sleep try this tonight command your sub to command your subconscious mind just be prime prime your mind just before bed and ask your mind please please allow me to have a restorative rejuvenating restful night's sleep please enable me to have a very restful rejuvenating restorative night's sleep and if you want to take it to another level ask us say to yourself i am grateful to my mind body and soul for giving me a restful, restorative, rejuvenating night's sleep. You are priming your mind before to bed. And it sounds crazy, but every time I do it, oh my gosh, what a better night's sleep I have. You know, it's, it's directing the subconscious mind, you know? So I've only ever, you know, I apply so much of this stuff to my waking practices, but now I'm also applying it to my sleeping practices. Wow, that's awesome. You know, like, I was like, oh, my God, he knows what you're talking about. And it, it could be like a very interesting conversation when it comes to uh, personal development and awakening journey, as I share. I, I truly believe that that is a very interesting topic that I would like to, to really have another day to welcome you. And I am really uh, into the idea you said, ramming the mind, because I actually never use alarms and I didn't know about the concept, right? When I was a little kid from the countryside, I had no idea, subconscious mind or whatever. But all I knew was like, I, I just had a desire of just changing our life, our family and myself. And I, I was so focused and all I saw is what the, the life that I want to create. So I often just like telling myself a lot, and then eventually, I also telling myself to wake up on that time, 5 a.m. or uh, normally 4 a.m. when I was a kid, as my mom and my dad often woke up at that time. Uh, so it was very interesting because I didn't know about the subconscious mind, but then it was just happened like that. Even I had alarm, but I would never wake up with the alarm, but I only wake up when I told myself. Yes. So uh, I, uh, when I started learning about personal development, I knew, oh, subconscious mind is size more than 90% of what we do. Uh, and if you, you also mentioned about the conscious nerd and if you go deeper, unconscious, subconscious, if we learn all about that, we say there's a lot of things that we have not known about ourselves. That if we uh, expand the consciousness, we tap into the very, very infinite energy. I truly yeah, I truly believe, and I, I see that, and I, I use that, like, having very discipline to be every day doing some practices, it is actually helping us to free ourselves from the distraction. Uh, so, uh, can you share your uh, daily habits? I, I really, like, you know, I took note some of the habits you mentioned, the morning journal the evening programming the mind. Uh, so maybe you also have some of the other habits during the day. Or... Yeah, so I, I, I use my habit tracking app here. So every single day, uh, I wake at the same time every day, followed by hydration, followed by a brief practice of Qigong movement to get my body very gradual. Because if you think about it, you, if you look at a flower as it unfolds in nature, very gradually, uh, when we wake up, if we suddenly get up, I used to suddenly get up and like try and snap myself into energy and it was it, it was it does wake you up 
actually now I prefer a much more relaxed, gentle way of awakening in alignment with nature. So I use Qigong, a very simple movement and breathing practice and mindfulness practice to, to gently wake up. Then I'll meditate after that where I'll, t I'll tap into uh, um, my thoughts, but I'll really tune into becoming present and stilling, stilling myself and becoming centered with, with, with my, my body, mind and soul. Then I have a very simple mindset protocol where I, I, I have a list of affirmations that I read out loud. Uh, again, that's directing my thoughts. And then from there, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take out my journal. I'll do my stream of consciousness. I'll write down whatever's on my mind, whatever I'm feeling, whatever I'm planning to do for the day. I'll commit to my actions. Uh, and then I'll use that journal practice then to, to solidify what my game plan is for the day. And I'll write out my priorities and I'll use my tools. I've got, uh, I use Asana to map out my priorities for the day. And then I'm set. I'm set for the day then. So then I'll go and work out. Uh, and then once the workout is complete, I'll have breakfast and I start the day. Um, and then at the end of the day, I follow a kind of reverse order practice where I'll do a, a reflection practice in the evening, uh, a, a, an evening stream of consciousness, where I'll just write down what I'm thinking, feeling and, 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 and what's left over. Because actually one of the biggest challenges when it comes to sleep is not unwinding from the thoughts that have gone through from the day. Uh, but also to celebrate the things that have gone well and, and, and look at things that could be improved for tomorrow. And I'll spend a brief time reading uh, and then I'll usually relax if my wife will enjoy some something on Netflix just to unwind and chill uh, and then, uh, you know, get a bed at, bed at a certain time. Yeah. So trying to... Yes, yeah, so we keep the patterns and I'll alter the sleep cycle based upon the seasons because in the winter I tend to sleep longer and in the summer I sleep less based upon the sunlight. So right now, uh, I'm, I'm having less sleep than I normally would. Okay. Thank you for uh, spending uh, time with us. It's scary. I don't know if it's for on your sleep or not. But uh, yeah, I believe that is what you have been doing, as you said, because this moment in time uh, where everyone also will see, say, like, what can I do to turn this crisis become opportunities? Uh, mm -hmm. So actually, we had a topic of uh, how to support our community. And I believe that setting an example as you have done leading the way of uh, you know developing yourself you know, even in this crisis and keep the business going and being flexible in changing the business model i think when you lead the way and when you overcome it you also inspire other people to see the possibilities and to see that uh, yeah even crisis we can figure it out and we can see that we had the ability that we have not discovered before. Uh, so can you share maybe the three ways that you have helped the people in the community that you have influenced or maybe you are going to? Uh, what, what was the most challenging thing or what were the challenging things and what were your three main ways to really support them and probably we also can do it in Vietnam and somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the first thing is, you know, everything we've talked about, the best way to support anyone in this, the best way, they always say this phrase, charity starts at home, you know, charitable behavior starts at home, change also starts at home. So any, any, any positive change, the first and foremost, it's the classic, the classic line of you've got to put your oxygen mask on first, you know, so first, firstly, if we want to support our community, this is not a time to 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 to, to let go of the self care practices that enable us to support ourselves. So the best way to support a community, is actually conversely to support ourselves first. We've got to take care of number one because if we want to if we want to develop energy and power to support our the people around us, we've got to be taking care of ourselves first. So that's why you know we spent quite a bit of time talking on this session about self care and self understanding because that's really the first step to be able to support your community. And that will also guide you really to, to point two, which is really how to serve the community. What is the best way for you to serve right now? Um, and for a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners, you'll see a lot of people pivoting. Uh, the, the word pivot has been used a lot in business right now. Uh, I think it's actually micro innovation because if you're delivering, if you're delivering a service or a product to, to a community right now, you may be doing it slightly differently because of restraints provided by the, the pandemic. Uh, so really, it's about understanding in what way are you best suited to support right now. It doesn't mean we should all go train uh, to support the medical services. It means we find a way to actually best support based upon our unique skill set. Uh, so that's why we talked a lot today about actually understanding ourselves, because that 
the question then becomes, what is the change you want to make in the world? How best can I support? What skills and resources can I bring to support my community or the world? Um, and once you make that decision, now is the time for imperfect action. So point three is this is not this is a this is the time. And I felt this. I, I as I mentioned earlier, I, I came back from honeymoon on the thirteenth of March, and by the time lockdown started in Britain on the twenty first, on the within four days, I'd planned and launched an entire online festival, which would normally take three to six months of hardcore planning. It took me four days of planning and I launched it on the fifth day. And by the fifth day, I'd already had over two and a half thousand people influenced within one day uh, because I took massive action. I, 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 I stripped back all the, the, the limiting beliefs. I stripped back all the doubt and I just got in the game. I jumped in first. I'd had, I, I used the situation as a calling to raise to be the best version of myself. You know, there was no holding back. I had to step up and I had to make things happen. It was, it felt like a duty to support. So I just put down all of the worries and doubts. What if this happens? What if this person says no? I didn't put any reliance on the outcome. I just did, did what I had to do. And 45 days later, we've been broadcasting every single day, bringing together influencers and inspiring people, putting on live classes for 45 days straight without rest working 10 to 12 hours a day to support people. Now, <laughs> the challenge then becomes, you asked about challenges, the challenge is still maintaining self-care. It's all, The second challenge becomes around actually when you're taking massive action is ensuring that you're taking time out to actually reflect upon, are you focused in the right direction? Are you doing the right thing? Is what you're doing effective? Is it is 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 it is it is it meaningful? Because it's very easy to just go full on into action without paying attention to what's actually happening and the results that you're creating. Because if you're looking to support people, and you know it's important that you're being effective. It's important that your actions count. So so really, it's about still the challenges are of self care. Uh, number two, uh, ensuring that what you're doing is effective and efficient. And then and, and thirdly. Um, remaining focused on the bigger picture you know and aligning everything you're doing with the bigger picture and, and also having 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 it's very easy during a crisis like this whether you know i've been through a couple of recessions it's very easy to get caught up in the present moment instead of actually taking a leadership position where you look above it and look beyond it to see what life will like life is what life should be like beyond it so i think one of the greatest challenges facing humanity right now is actually falling into short-term thinking. If you look at the world and you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, people have gone into safety and security. They've gone to the baseline level of human needs. A leader now needs to step up and step out of that and go back to self-actualization. What's beyond? What's beyond this present moment? And where, should we, where are we going beyond this? And that's, that's, that's a challenge that all leaders always face. But it's important that we don't fall into the trap of short-term thinking when the rest of the world around us has, has fallen into that. Wow, that's powerful. I also had uh, a lot of different conversations at the beginning of this crisis. And I I also heard uh, the words that you said about the leadership one, right? And I saw a lot of uh, probably uh, concerns from people to see like, who am I? And maybe it comes back to the limiting belief about they are not enough to be a leader. But at uh, this moment in time, if not one of us, or let's say some of us stand up and say, uh, we have that better future somewhere if we keep going. Uh, so uh, how can a person to really uh, step up and leading that way, that limiting belief? And I think it's probably come back to the conversation before personal development, but uh, I believe that probably would be one of the things to hinder people to really actually take some step to lead the way because the negativity there is easy to spread out and it is quite everywhere. But now what, what is the leadership, the possibility? Uh, so how can one overcome uh, that limiting belief and really lead the way and embrace their leadership inside them? Yes, it's a fascinating question. And this is this is what I've come to realize on this point. And it's 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 fascinating. So limiting behind every limiting belief at the root of every limiting belief is fear. And actually, in personal development, we spend all our time actually trying to overcome our fears, <laughs> which is which is an interesting thing to do, because actually, we by doing that, we start to get into action. What I've actually learned now is that rather than trying to overcome fear, I actually use fear to drive me forward. So one of the things that came to me immediately when this pandemic arrived 
and, and by the way, I, I, we all have different views on the pandemic and, 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 and the virus itself. But it, it thrusts me into thinking how if this if I, it, you know, if this if I can't serve in this moment and I spent you know, with the with the with the summit that I put on the, the festival, if I spend the next three to six months planning this, the whole thing's going to pass by. The opportunity to serve is now. So actually, I allowed the fear to be my driving force. I, I partnered with my fear. Rather than trying to overcome it or navigate it, I actually went into partnership with it. I made it my business partner because actually without it, I would have stepped on the sidelines and watched, the, watched this unfold. My greatest fear was not being able to contribute. And in fact, again, when I studied some of the wealthiest and most successful individuals, they utilize fear. They make friends with their fear and they allow it to drive them forward. Uh, and, and right now in this moment, I'm working on a, the second evolution of this project. And the fear is driving me every day. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if I, don't, if I don't get this thing out there in the world, this moment will pass. This moment will pass. And regardless of the, whether we're talking about the pandemic or the world, this moment will always pass. This present moment that we have right now is gone in a second. So actually, I utilize the fear of time passing to drive me because... Time is in time itself is, is a man-made concept. It's infinite, but our experience of time, <laughs> we are, we are, we are, we are finite beings. Goes back to the spiritual conversation. So if we're not actually controlling time, time will control us. My greatest fear is losing time because for so much time I allowed my actual fear to control me, whereas now I control the fear. It's my, I, I lead it. It's my, it's, it's one of the team, <laughs> you know. Lovely. Maybe I will propose a conversation named uh, Less Fear Lead the Way. <laughs> so... Well, it depends. Yeah, if you hire it, let fear lead the way because it's converse. It's, it's one of those paradoxes. When we try and eliminate it, actually, it's the thing that we need. It's, it's often the thing that we need to move us forward. You know, if, 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 if I was talking to a, a very famous business owner in the UK uh, just this last week. And as soon as the pandemic kicked in, the fear kicked in for him because he didn't want his business to change. He didn't want any drop, you know, he, he didn't want any drop in the trajectory of his business. He was on a growth path. Now, of course, it, 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 it's, he leveled everyone out in terms of their approach. His fear enabled him to look at the situation and thought, I cannot allow this to happen. You know, the fear was the leader, but it, it, it didn't it didn't it didn't inhibit him. It drove him. So fear can be our ally. You know, we but we have to remember that we're the leader of the fear. It's when the fear leads us. That's the problem. Uh, I be, I, uh, I'm beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I, this is beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. And I'm really, you know, when I I was first time read uh, what Tony Robbins, yeah. Or somebody like, you know, JJ Lerner talk about fear. They say it's a sign for us to do, for telling us that we are doing something worth it. Uh, otherwise, we're not feeling that. So it was a very like a changing moment for me to see, to test. Oh, is this opportunity giving me that fear enough to, to really see that it's worth it trying or it's actually something that I have been doing and it's like a, you're in a comfort zone. Uh, so it's really nice to see that you actually live with the fear and even use it as a friend to tell you uh, what actually matter here to move forward. Uh, so do you think that also may influence on the mind of uh, getting to the flow because you you said that you're using the kind of perception of look at how can I not let, let the time pass without doing meaningful things or without doing what matter to me. But do you think that somehow people can kind of like have the you know, confusion or maybe the difficulties of seeing it as something that not in the present? Yeah, well, that's the beauty of fear. And if you study flow, you know, the, a lot of the flow studies have come from extreme sports. And, you know, I, I've had I've had a, I've had a dance with extreme sports. I've done a, some I've done some pretty crazy mountain biking. I've done some pretty crazy stuff in the ocean. And the thing is, you have to be you have to be fully present. You have to be fully present and alert because you, 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 your decisions that you're making consciously and subconsciously in the minute, in, in the in the seconds and microseconds determine whether you're going to uh, successfully navigate the situation or, you know, worst case, you know, when I mountain bike down the world, world's most dangerous road, if I made a mistake there, I'm dead. You know, so in those moments, fear, you have to be present 
with your fear, but it's the it, it create it, it creates the opportunity to make rapid decisions. Now, here's the thing again: it comes to paradox. If we allow, if we if we can control our fear, and we can lead the fear. We can fear can, fear can guide us in, into the moment and into action. But then the other side of that is love, the love, the love piece, our mission, our vision. You know, when we when we when we transcend fear and actually move into love, that's where we get the balance of 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 of, of flow because we're utilizing both forces. You know, to 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 ignore one either or of the forces is going to actually keep us stagnant. So we can use fear to push us and propel us but we can use love to guide us uh, and when we use both forces together you know that's duality again it's the yin and yang we're using light and dark we're using both forces in unity to create momentum and flow like we need both you know when you're a surfer you're utilizing the fear to stay on the board but you're also in pure connection with everything and the world around you through the love of the the, the sport and the love of the nature around you you know it's just uh, you use both forces, you know, they're both there for you. Wow. It's very beautiful how that you use that kind of example of the surfing. It seems to be like a really go-go activity there. But at the same time, if we not stay staying in the present and being that focused in the present, we're going to go off from that boat. So it's very beautiful. And um, yeah, another day, please. I would love to order you a conversation about that's very uh, deep down understanding of ourselves. Uh, so I really like what you said about we need to really take care of ourselves. And from there, we have the clarity of what we can offer the best to, or uh, let's say the most effectively to the community around us and then do it because uh, this time probably going to pass. So what we want to do, maybe not as effective as if we can do it right now, if we do in the future. Uh, and then also stay focused and reconnect with the big picture. So we're not like pulling into some kind of chain just because of this is chain rather than it's actually coming from our true core value. Uh, so I, actually, I took a lot of time from the question from our members. And uh, so I, uh, I think we had a chance to, we had a kind of like arrangement that we speak from, 7 30 to 8 30 and uh, <laughs> I, I, like, you know I, i'm gonna want to talk about this conversation forever but i also think we, we're gonna okay we make sure that we utilize the time so uh, we have one question from the audience and i think uh, she has been here for a long time uh, and uh she has was very like you know looking looking at us on the screen uh, so <laughs> thank yeah. you uh, okay and uh, with a very beautiful smile. I have a question here that what is the most like, difficult thing for businesses to change during the last months and how did you help them to do that? Well, that's a very good question. So, and the answer is actually far simpler than people are making it out to be. So the most important thing to do, and this is this is a, this is a fascinating understanding of your marketplace in business right now who your customer is today may be different tomorrow mm-hmm. so in a time like this this is the time to go back to what i describe as first principles of business which is who is my market what problem do i want to solve for the market or can i solve for the market uh, and even more important than that is what 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 is your what is, what is your customer trying to achieve because without people always talk about solve problems right but how do we how do we define a problem without the context of a desire so it goes back to what are the needs of your customer right now what are the desires what are their problems and the reason i say your customer today may be different tomorrow and what I mentioned earlier on about the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, what you realize now is people's priorities have shifted. They have shifted. I believe they've only shifted momentarily, but the reality is um, they have shifted. So it goes back to first principles. Who is your customer? What are they thinking about? What do they care about? What are their emotions? What are their frustrations? What are they trying to achieve in this present moment? And then we need to then look at our products and services as a business and understand how do we how do we adapt? How do we adapt? to meet those needs in the present moment. Because what a lot of people are doing is they're taking offline versions of their service and digitizing them without actually paying attention to the underlying market. 
So sometimes you'll get lucky, but actually it's about understanding the human need that is being met by your service because um, there has been great studies throughout innovation throughout time and there's lots of different views on innovation, but there is a, there is a consensus that most innovation is where we are applying technology to an existing need. So let's take Instagram as an example. Did people take photographs prior to Instagram existing? Yes. Did people share photos with their friends and family prior to Instagram existing? Yes, they did. Did, did people edit photographs prior to Instagram existing? Yes, they did. They took a technology and combined them together to create a new service that met the needs that were already existing. So technology enables us to meet human needs in a different way. So that's where it comes back to. What are the needs that your business is trying to serve right now? But recognizing that the need that you served yesterday or today may have may have changed momentarily because people's mindsets have gone to short term thinking and they're, they're in safety and survival. Not everyone. Don't don't believe me. Not everyone is there. But a lot of people have gone to safety and survival, thinking about human needs. So it's about understanding how can your product and service either meet the customer where they're at or that piece of leadership, take them where they need to go very quickly uh, to get them out of safety and survival and, and back up the, the chain of human needs. Because um, we can, we can, this, is, this is the greatest time for entrepreneurship and innovation. The next wave of millionaires, multimillionaires, billionaires and decamillionaires are going to be created in this period, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Yeah. So it's really about understanding how the world has shifted, how it's shifting and understanding how you're best equipped to serve and solve. And based on what something Jen said a minute ago, the ideas will come to you. You will see that you will feel you will, you will they will come in inspiration. The time that you leave it to act upon it out of fear is where things get destroyed. You will know. And I had an idea a, a month ago and I saw it just yesterday. Someone else has done it. They've already got 250,000 customers. <laughs> I didn't act on it quick enough. It's not to say I wouldn't act on it again, but you've got to understand the lag time. You, the insights will come to you. When they come, you have to act because otherwise someone else will, right? So um, you pay attention to what's going on in the marketplace. Tune into your own response to the market and act quickly because that's the fear piece again. Don't allow the don't allow time to pass without you stepping in and, and, and being the solution. Uh, there's no time to overthink. The time is now. Imperfect action. There's never been a better time for imperfect action. That's true. The people have the tolerance for it now, and it's about who actually uh, dares. Just let that fear to motivate to take that action, which is important and never know that how many people life can be impacted in a great way. Really, really love what you uh, said and made me remind, remind myself about a business model I wrote like for two years when I was in uh, my first master in Spain, I wrote a business model named Jen Travel, right? Jet E N, and the idea was to actually connect uh, travelers and local people and exchange ideas. And it was very back then the couch surfing, just like lunch hour. And then uh, I I didn't do it. And then uh, when I had the concept, my friend said, oh, it was similar to couch shopping. And then I said, oh, so I learned from that. And then I was really excited to do something about it, but I did it. And then I came back to Vietnam and I had uh, a time I saw a business that kind of a similar concept and it got really big now. Uh, so a very great example on that. <laughs> so That's thank- okay. It's okay. And I think about it, MySpace, you know, Facebook, face- the Facebook is, you know, everyone in the world is on Facebook almost, you know, like, you know it's a slight exaggeration. But Facebook has real problems right now. You know, even if a solution already exists, it can be done differently and better. And the better the better you understand the market as it is now and as it will be, the more likely you are to be able to create a different solution or better solution to what's already out there. So even if there is competition, they are resting on their laurels. You know, Blockbuster video years back, Netflix came along. Blockbuster could have bought Netflix for $50 million. They missed out on that one. And Blockbuster went bust just because there's a competition of any magnitude out there right now. Nothing. They may have built some barriers, but when the world is changing around you and the market is changing, there is opportunity. So it's, it's about get your ear to the ground, watch what's happening, watch where people are at, but then understand where is gonna, what's going to happen because we're all in short term thinking what's beyond the short term. Uh, and you th- think how you can lead that change. And the insights are with you. I can, I can guarantee it. You've already had ideas. Act on them. Act yeah. on them. 
Totally Move fast. Create an inexpensive solution. Act on it. Test it and see if it's going to work. And again, when you, when anyone here to, when hearing the word move fast doesn't mean that it's, it's a short term thinking. It's really coming from, again, the very difficult choice of really look at the customer inside and look at the long term, the big picture, because that I think is a more difficult practice comparing to just like uh, do it without even like uh, the be quite mindful and quite thoughtful to analyze and understand what uh, people how people, what people want now, and then from that, having that idea in mind, I go quick and I fast. And uh, even I shared that experience uh, example that I didn't do, and then there's people out there do it. But I also see that I learned from that, and I had a kind of like another business now similar to that, which I believe everything happened, we learn something with the idea that we don't give exactly. up on learning. Uh, and we don't, uh, like kind of like make it become an excuse to say, oh, I, I won't try, but it's about, okay, so let's me. We're differently next time and learn from that. Uh, so thank you so much. I have another question here. I don't know how long I can give you, but uh, <laughs> you know, in your own perception, what is the most effective way of avoiding uh, depression or concern during the crisis? Yeah. Oh. What? Sorry, can you repeat that, Jen? I missed. I missed it slightly. So, yeah. Uh, Shalin or no, no, you ask a question that how can you overcome any kind of doubts or even depression during this time? Well, it really comes down to standing guard at the door of your mind. Uh, in this present moment, if you go on social media or main, the mainstream media or the news, you will be bombarded by bad news. You'll be bombarded by spirited debate around the virus the lockdown vaccines 5g and all of these big big topics that are circulating around the world so firstly it's about unplugging from any source that is going to trigger you into feeling doubt or negativity or even as close as depression and then really reconnect and i'm no expert in depression but i felt i've, I've had moments in my life where i've been very low it comes back to rest restoring the practices that enable you to feel joyful. I believe there's something called sublime states. Peace, love, joy, and gratitude. Those four for sublime states. Peace, love, joy, and gratitude. So if you can tune your mind, what is... And, and by the way, I'll tell a very short story. I, I fat, Funny enough, just before I came Peace, on this call... love, joy, and gratitude. That's correct, yeah. So just before I came onto this live call, about an hour, hour before... I was at a beach here in the southwest of England where I live and I was there about five years ago and I was in a very dark place at the time, despite the fact I was in a very beautiful place. And I wrote down in my journal, what am I most happy about right now? And I couldn't answer the question. Oh, Jenny, you still there? You're frozen. Uh oh, I don't know if you can still hear me. <laughs> Jen, is, Jen is frozen. Um, I don't know if I should keep talking. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I may do, uh, but I'm just going to hold for a moment for Jen, uh, just to avoid telling the story if you can't hear me. If you can, great, but I have no way of telling. Um, Jen, are you there? You with me, Jen? I think I just heard something. I'm just going to wait a moment. And I don't know if you can hear me on the live stream. I don't know what's making it work. I've got a feeling that you can probably still hear me on the live stream. So I will continue very briefly. Um, I've had this experience broadcasting myself. So I'm going to let Jen be frozen for the moment, but I will continue. So I had this moment where I was asking myself, what, what am I most happy about? And I couldn't answer the question. So I just changed the question to what could I be happy about? And then all of a sudden, my brain started to look things I could be happy about. So I started to list things out. And then I wrote another question, what else could I be happy about? And by doing that, all of a sudden, there was a whole list of new things. So you could use those four sublime states. Ask yourself, what is bringing me peace right now? What else could bring me in a pace right now? What else could bring me in a pace right now? Sorry, what's bringing me in a peace right now? What could bring me in a pace and what else could bring me in a peace? What is bringing me joy right now? What could bring me joy right now? What else could bring me joy right now? What enables me to feel love right now? What else could, what could enable me to feel love right now? What else could enable me to feel love right now? 
what am I most grateful right for right now? What could I be grateful for right now? And what else could I be grateful for right now? And I don't know if you heard any of those things, but if you focus on those four sublime states, peace, love, joy, and gratitude, uh, and disconnect from the, the negative forces, then it will redirect your mind. But by the way, I also think it's okay to be, it's okay to spend time in your darkness as long as you don't live there. The question becomes, what is it here to teach me? Oh, I think I just had a voice call from Jen. <laughs> if you can hear me on the live feed, I'm talking to Jen. <laughs> Are you there, Jen? I can hear you on the screen just about, I think. Okay. So if you are still with me on the live stream, I apologize. If you're not, then I'm just talking to air. Either way, it's all fine. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm just, just waiting, waiting. To, to hear if, if Jen. Yes, yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, yes. Oh, lovely, awesome. Uh, so I think the laptop actually gets hot because of our very hot topic. <laughs> In the way of uh, like, uh, you know, it's just like, wow. I didn't know that I have that. I've lost you again now. I can't hear you again. I've lost you again. I'm just going to text you. I don't know if you're still with me on the live stream. It does say we're still live. I'm just texting Jen. I think we're having trouble. It's something about the computer being. Are you interested in how that you put the. I can't hear you. I just heard you again. Hey, Jen. I can, your screen has just moved again, but I can't hear you. My pleasure. Uh, I think the live stream is still going, so I continue to answer the question. <laughs> um, My pleasure. Cool. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave you on here. So if we can, if I can't hear you on the screen, um, so so three three takeaways. Well, firstly, I think it's about. You know, number one is self-understanding. Seek to understand yourself at the highest level. You know, who are you? What are you here for? Step two is really about asking then, how can I serve right now? How can I make the greatest possible difference? And then step three is really to to let go of the fear and and, and allow fear, uh, allow yourself to lead the fear rather than feed fear leading you, and 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 take imperfect action. You know, my own experience is in business is that the more time you spend thinking about something, the less likely you are to do it. There's a lag time. So just take action, you know, imperfect action. Don't worry about perfection. You know, you can make things better as you go. It's really about taking action now, aligned action, you know, align with your mission, align with your vision, align with your highest possible self and then go. You know, it's, it is it is about going. It, it all blends together. You, you've heard me talk about 
the inside work and the outside work you know both both complement together they're 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 connected so um the more we can deeply understand ourselves the better we can influence the outside world um and that's that's really uh what i'd say and um the biggest the biggest thing i'll find finish on is the biggest thing for me is really understanding my mission uh, and when i when i when i when i when i now wake up every day the first thing i think about is how can i elevate humanity and enrich the world and that guiding question uh shows me the way thank you i really appreciate that and uh dan you have made you have made the days of somebody and then will be more people who will watch this later on so it. i really appreciate it and uh, i would love to have you back on uh a day where we have like a um, number of people in the room uh, where because people will go now start getting used to go in back online yes online, yes because in vietnam we uh, really have now the chance to meet each other offline oh cool uh, so i think uh, we, we slowly getting back together as a community offline uh, so we like to have you back one day surprising online You know, it will be interesting for the community, and I really like to have you to make the entrepreneurs to see or maybe appreciate more the uh, self actualization and self awareness, self love, and also clarity of understanding more, expanding our consciousness. And so I really do appreciate that. Thank My you pleasure. So much. Really yeah, cool. I really enjoyed it. Really. Awesome. It's great to see you again. It's lovely to connect again. Thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it and be be my be honored to come back. Yeah, so I think the, the like Facebook, Instagram, or where, where do they reach out to you? Cool. So uh, my 100% focus at the moment is on the on the online festival called Elevate Live, which you can find at elevatedaily.co. That's elevatedaily.co, um, as in daily elevation, elevatedaily.co. You'll find uh, over 100 hours of content that we've created on there, 75 speakers in the last 45 days. Um And we're just about to evolve that. And then in terms of staying in contact, uh, I'm on all the major channels, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Instagram. Uh, if you want to message me, you're best off messaging me on LinkedIn. I, I'm, my Facebook is out of, out of control. <laughs> With the summit, I've had all, everyone comes in via Facebook. Um, but I can't. I've been, you know, I've been broadcasting for 10 to 12 hours a day. So uh, responding to messages on Facebook has been slower. So, uh, or, or visit just danjgregory.com. You'll find my website there and all my contact details. You can email me directly through there uh, if you'd like uh, to ask any questions. But yeah, do check out Elevate Live. Uh, it's it's a fascinating project and um, there's some really cool stuff on there that you might enjoy. Definitely. Uh, for my for myself, I think the most thought, you know, the, the most powerful thing you can do going into the end of your day is to look out at nature and just see how miraculous nature is, and remind yourself that you're part of that miracle, um, and that that the every everything that everything that flows through you is is all part of the same energetic source. And then finally, we talk a lot about gratitude and feeling grateful. But if you can, before you go to bed tonight, just 
take a moment to reflect upon things that you're grateful for today and really feel it. You know, it's very easy to just write down, I'm grateful for this, but actually just take a moment in your heart to really, really feel it to the point where you almost become, you know, overwhelmed of emotion, overwhelmed of gratitude. That is where, that's where the real power is right there. Thank you, Jen. Keep it up and stay in touch. Will do. Love you and love to, to your wife also. Thank you, Jen. Really great. Thank you. For, lovely to be here and I'll, I'll speak to you again soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Cheers. Peace and love. See you. Yeah, just. Yeah, really do, really do. Yeah, love you. Bye. Đúng rồi. Nhờ, um, hồi đấy bạn chưa lấy vợ. À, hồi đấy bạn lấy vợ, bạn ấy người yêu bạn ấy, bạn ấy rất yêu nhau. Um, bạn hai bạn đấy là hồi đấy em biết là bạn ấy có định cưới không nhưng mà sao tự nhiên lại cái ending nó lại bị thế này nó lại nó bị đơ nó bị đơ cái ending của em kết nối được với nhiều người vâng bạn này bạn này hồi đấy là speak uh, em mời bạn ấy speaking em em là khi ra đây một trại rồi đi 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 bạn này